what's the Garfield Heights connection? Just my, you're curious? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I saw you there, but I didn't, I didn't know. If oh, uh, I wanted to go watch a high school basketball game. And uh, I know a couple of their guys on their team that's really good. It's a couple of high school kids. Um, Michi Johnson Jr. is like a nephew of mine. Um, me and his uh, dad grew up playing ball together. Um, and I've been knowing Sonny and Juby my whole life. So uh, there's a connection for you. So they don't have, there's, there's not like the same beat guy there on staff? No, no, no. Those are my Cleveland connection. LeBron, you mentioned the other night the importance of the, the Houston Rockets game and, and what happened during that game and allowed you to get on this kind of streak. Yeah. What was it about that game that, that you saw that made you feel like this was coming? I just think the way we played, the way we competed for 48 minutes, um, you know, leads was went from us having lead, them having lead, us having lead, them having lead, them kind of, you know, breaking it open and us getting back into the game. Um, and we just battled all the way to, you know, the loose ball on the ground where we couldn't come up with the loose ball. James hit Capella for the A and one. Uh, you know, it kind of, you know, it kind of ended the game. But we just competed. Was like four or five guys on the floor at that point in time trying to get a loose ball. You know, and that just let me know that we was kind of turning the corner. So, um, you know, that game kind of. Um, it was a game where we knew we played well. As well as you're playing as a team, does it reduce the urgency if there is any, like for Tristan and IT to get back? Does it make it easier for them to kind of? Uh, there's never been never been urgency for any one of our guys that's gotten injured or hasn't been able to play to get back. It's not how we do it around here. When guys are healthy and are ready to get back in the lineup, then they'll be there. But there's never been no urgency um, for anyone. I mean, you just see him work out here. Does it whet the appetite? Or the fact that they seem to be getting fairly close. Um, well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's all about the next day. And when they say they feel good the next day after a workout and a session, then you know, that's that's great to know. Uh, that's for sure. The other night, uh, Channing said that as well as your plan this year, we're seeing about 80 percent of you. Usually, we only see about 60 percent of the right? Who made that number up? Who made, this, who made that 60 percent up? You? No, Channing made the 80 up. Who made the 60 up? Oh, okay. <laughs> I've never played that 60 in my life. Never. But uh, okay, cool. It sounds good. I like it. Go ahead. Keep going. Basically, what do you make of his observation of the level? Um, I could play better. Um, you know, but I think right now I'm in a really good groove. Um, but for me, every month I get better and better. That's how always I've been. You know, in my career. Um, I get stronger and stronger as the months go on. So, um, you know, I just want to continue that. I want to continue to get better and better every month. This is December. I'm at 80. So January, I'll be at 85. Uh, I'll be at 90. Um, in February, I'll be at 95. Um, you know, in March. And then when playoffs start, I'll be at 100 all the way up and hopefully until June. So, um, you know, hopefully I can continue that. The, the percentage thing is, is kind of silly. <laughs> Uh, is there some pacing that you go through, particularly in this run that you've been through going to the NBA Finals? Um, pacing? I don't know. Um, Ramping up? I, I don't know. I really don't. That's not, I don't. I mean, I, I hear the narrative a lot about me, but I don't really, I'm not a, really a pace guy. I'm, I, tra I train so much. It's not like I'll be just like chilling and then I get on the court, I'll be chilling. No, nah, I don't know. I don't. Why? Because it does it look easy or something? Are well, you playing well? No. I, I've always played well. You have, you have to tell me if it's easy. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, it's just it's just it's just my training regimen. It's just who I am. That you know, people you know are. I think people just grown accustomed of what I do, and you know, it just get, it gets taken for granted at times of what I do. You know, and. Um, because I do it so often and it's, it's been a constant thing for so long. It's like, oh, yeah, that's what LeBron's supposed to do. You know, so it looks easy, but it's not. You did something in Chicago that you don't normally do, uh, just the one-handed naked mm -hmm. ball mm -hmm. Was that no the MJ that we miss it? No, no, no. Uh, I heard that. I heard the, the spin and the fadeaway. But we've seen was, Yeah, but I, I heard about that. I also heard that I scored 23 on purpose. Because I was coming. Kind of, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I did it all because of MJ. Let's, <laughs> let's create some stories. I like it. I'll be able to name a retro after that. <laughs>
Let's do it. Brian, you've had a lot of winning streaks in your career. Yeah. At what point during a winning streak does it become something you either want to chase or a real thing of pride? 25. Because you're getting close to 33, that's an all-time record. And we ain't nowhere near close. We got close to Miami, we got the 27, and lost to Chicago. Uh, because of, because MJ plays now. <laughs> Brian, I, know you, I, I know you said um, that you didn't feel like you had to do this. Um, did Derek address the team today? Uh, have you guys talked? Tilo can Tilo uh, talk to you guys about that. Hey Brian, since you can you know equal the franchise record for win streaks mm. tonight, what's the difference between this group and the nine and ten teams? Uh, that was 2019 when we did it. Back to back. Um, oh, uh, I think we're, we're, we're more balanced now. Um, we're much more balanced. Uh, we were more, back then we were, we were together a little bit longer, you know, and uh, we kind of knew exactly what we wanted to do. We had our system in place for a while because Mike Brown was there for quite a while and we knew exactly what we were doing every night defensively, offensively. Um, you know, we're starting to get to that point now, but we're much more talented today. I mean, we're much more talented. I mean, so we got Hall of Famers, multiple Hall of Famers on our team right now, and multiple All Stars and things of that nature that um, that we didn't have back in that old that old nine team. Uh, so uh, it's a different um, it's a different team. But the one thing I can say that both teams had they just had the composure to one to defend and then to execute offensively. And every night we went on the floor, we thought we could win. Every single night, no matter who we're going against, we feel like we can win, and that's definitely a plus. You think you're different too? Oh yeah, I'm much different. I'm a much better player now. I was, I was, I was okay back then. <laughs> I was at sixty percent. How much do you think about those teams? Their record? Does it matter? No, not this season. Nah, nah, we we. We tried to focus on some records early in the season. We got our butts kicked, and uh, and that's what you should never do. I mean, we haven't done that of late. Listen, whoever's coming our building or whoever we play on the road, we just uh, you know attack that you know who that that team was, that individual, what they're trying to do, what they uh, what they want to do, and, um, and and they went from there. So, like I said, we've been consistent with our game plan, both offensively and defensively, as of late, and has allowed us to you know win ball games. Ron, have you already visualized what this team looks like when IT gets on the floor? Yeah, yeah, because I play a lot of 2K. Seriously, I've said this uh, before. I play a lot of NBA 2K, and it's the most realistic game that basketball game that, that, that you could ever play. And uh, I, I mix and match a lot of uh, a, a, a lot of uh, lineup changes and things of that nature to see how we can be uh, really good. So um, you know, I've done that. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. How's the video game versus me? No, the, the, the version, version of you. The version of me? They do a good job. They do a good job. They do a good job. Anything else, guys? Did you say you went to see Garfield Heights? Garfield Heights, yeah. Did you think of Alonzo Gaffney there? He, uh, he a big kid. Because I saw him play at St. Joe's Heights. Yeah, yeah. They won a state championship last year. He's a sophomore. And he transferred. And uh, he's a... Uh, he has a lot of athleticism, um, a lot of leaping ability, and uh, the one thing that you just hope that he just just get uh, get bored with the game because he's so much better than well the team that I seen last night. He was much better than every kid out on the floor, and uh, you know you just you know you want him to always try to challenge himself, and that's along with the rest of those guys too. Listen, Garfield Heights got they got some players. They got some players. That, that won't be the first. That won't be the last time I see them play this year. What's the strategy of, of moving from a really good basketball school like the ASU, mm -hmm. you know, where they get to Columbus every year, it seems, to mm -hmm. a place like Garfield Heights where they've had trouble getting out of the league? Um, well, he's trying, to, uh, he's trying to do something different. And you got to respect that. Um, you they got to get some better looks from bigger schools? No, nah, listen, when you're a town, you get found anywhere. You can play underneath the dirt these days with social media. Mm -hmm. As long as you clip it, they're going to find you. <laughs>